little sound check. Okay, good morning to everyone. Shall we all gather together as we begin our Sunday school? I'd also like to commend those uh, live viewers who are watching with us here on site. There are currently 43 live viewers na kasama po natin sa Facebook Live. Okay, so uh, for those who are here, may I request everyone to please stand. Tayo po tayong lahat and let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another morning that you given to us, another Sunday, another day of worship. Thank you for the new life that you have given to us. And uh, Lord, we just like to praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your faithfulness to our lives and to us as a church. Uh, we ask that you forgive our sins, Lord. We ask that you cleanse our hearts from all wicked thoughts and uh, uh, things that might bother us from studying your word. We ask, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to guide us. And lead us as we study your word this morning. All these things I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So you may be seated and kindly turn to Judges. Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. In our lives, God uses unique and unlikely individuals and circumstances to channel his provisions to us. It is sometimes through unlikely people that we receive the things we desperately need. It is sometimes through unlikely circumstances that we get to know more about God or even become channels of blessings to others as well. In the Bible, God also uses unique and unlikely individuals and circumstances to accomplish His divine purpose. God uses unique and unlikely individuals and circumstances to accomplish His divine purpose. So kindly turn to Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. So the background again of the book of Judges is that even though a lot of people avoid it or a lot of people think that it is just such a violent uh, book, it has an overarching theme. Meron po siyang tema. And this overarching theme, theme is this. God is the deliverer of His idolatrous people. Ang Diyos ang manunubos at mang mangliligtas para sa kanyang mga tao na sumasamba sa ibang Diyos. So napaka-ironic no, na kahit, uh, or, although grabbing grace ng Panginoon na kahit makulit or pasaway itong mga taong to, is mahal niya pa rin ang kanyang mga pinili. So ma maaari magtataka kayo, no? last week ang diniscuss natin is chapter 2. Uh, this morning, we're going to discuss chapter 4 and some parts of chapter 5. Uh, yung chapter 3 po kasi, diniscuss na po yan ni Brother Genesis nung tayo ay nagsimula sa Judges before our missions conference. It was during October when uh, Brother Genesis started uh, Judges chapter 3. So, lalaktawan po natin yan for this morning. However, we're going to have a short review. Last Sunday, nag-discuss tayo ng chapter 2 kung saan uh, nagkaroon ng comparison sa old generation at saka sa new generation. Yung new generation na pumalit sa old generation ay ito yung mga tao na uh, nawala sa pagsamba sa Diyos. Nawala sa kanilang kultura ang pagkilala kay Yahweh, kay Jehovah na nagligtas sa kanila mula sa Egypto. And in chapter 3, we can see an, uh, an overview kung may sa chart sana sa likod. Okay, so, let's have a review of chapter 3. In chapter 3, there are three key people whom God used in order to deliver His people. So, Israel sinned. Alam naman natin na ganun yung cycle. Nagkakasala yung Israel and then tatawag sila sa Panginoon kapag naapila sila. And then, ililigtas sila ng Panginoon through the deliverer. So, in chapter 3, uh, Israel sinned and was oppressed by a certain group of people called the Mesopotamians. So, malalakas itong mga taong to at uh, in a inalipin or inalipus na nila mga Israelita uh, for eight years. For eight years. However, God heard their cries and God provided a man named Othniel. And it is through Othniel that Israel was delivered and they were able to enjoy peace for 40 years. Meron po bang 40 years dito? 40 years old sakto. Wala pa. So, imagine yung age natin ngayon. No? Para dun sa mga below 40. 
Uh, yung simula pagkapanganak tayo hanggang doon sa age natin ngayon, hindi pa tapos yung rest na binigay ng Panginoon sa mga Israelites nang diniliver sila ni Othniel. However, ano nangyari? After that generation, nagkasala na naman ng Israel at dumami na naman yung mga tao na sumasamba sa ibang Diyos. So again, the punishment of God is there. Sabi ng Diyos, paparosahan ko kayo. Israel sinned and was oppressed by another group of people called the Moabites. And they were oppressed for 18 years. 18 years silang under the oppression of the Moabites. Again, tumawag sila sa Panginoon. Kinikilala lang nila yung Panginoon tuwing sila ay naaapi na, di ba? So they called on God. Uh, after 18 years of oppression, God provided them a man named Ehud. So si Ehud, pinatay niya yung hari ng mga kalaban nila. Naalala niyo pa yung pangalan ng hari na malaki. Si Eglon. Diba? Pinatay ni Ehud si Eglon. And uh, God used him to deliver the Israelites from the Moabites. And they were able to enjoy 80 years. 80 years of rest. Now, throughout that 80 years, may isang nanggugulo na isa pang nasyon sa mga Israelita. So, this nation is called the Philistines. And alam naman natin na dadami sila eventually throughout the history of Israel. Hindi sila mawawala. Pero inapin nila yung Israel during the reign of Ehud and God gave them Shamgar. Si Shamgar yung uh, pumatay ng 600 Philistines using an ox goad. Okay, yung ginagamit pang goad ng uh, mga oxen during their time. So parang ano to, parang shepherd's tool, pero 600 ang napatay niya. So that is an overview of chapter 3 as we begin in chapter 4. Now let's look at chapter 4 and let's read verses 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, or Sisera, which dwelt in Harosheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. So makikita natin from this passage, Israel's sin and its corresponding punishment from God. Muli po, nagkasala na naman ang mga Israelita laban sa Diyos nang tinalikuran nila ang Diyos na dapat nilang sinasamba. Kung tutuusin, wala naman silang dapat sambahin kundi ang Diyos na nagligtas sa kanila mula sa Egypto. Ang Diyos na nagpangako sa kanila ng lupa na nilulubos nila sa panahon na to na ating binasa. Wala silang ibang dapat sambahin kundi ang Diyos na nagligtas sa kanila at nagprovide sa kanila throughout their wilderness journey. However, as the verse said in verse 1, they did evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So we have a godly ruler who died and then nagpasaway na yung mga Israelites. Sabi nga ng kasabihan, no, when the cat is away, the mouse will play. So parang ganito yung nangyayari ng mga Israelites. And if we're going to look at chapter 5 verse 8, kindly look with me. Ano sabi dyan sa description? They chose new gods. Pumili sila ng mga bagong sasambahin. So, para sa kanila, parang optional lang kung sino sasambahin, no? Parang multiple choice. Kung sinong trip nilang sambahin, yun ang sasambahin nila. Hindi nila sinasamba yung dapat sambahin. But we know that God is a jealous God. Inemphasize niya to under the leadership of Moses. God will not share His glory that is rightfully His. God will not share His glory with other false gods. Dahil sa kanya yun eh. Yung glory ng Panginoon ay isang bagay na hindi niya pwedeng ibigay sa ibang Diyos, Diyosan. At sa kahit ano, at sa kahit sino. Pero ang ginawa ng mga Israelites is that they worship other gods. Verses 2 and 3, we can see here the punishment of God that He gave to the Israelites. So, sino po dito yung kalaban nila sa panahon na to? Ito yung mga Canaanites. Okay, yung mga Canaanites, yung nakatira na habang wala yung mga Israelites doon, sila yung nagpopulate doon sa lugar na dapat sa mga Israelites. So, dumami sila, and they have one, shall we say, yung pinaka, ano nila, kumbaga, emperor nila, kung sa terms ng Japanese, no, yung pinaka nakatataas nilang king. And this is none other than King Jabin. Now, King Jabin is not really uh, mentioned in detail. Ang kinakat kinatatakutan ng mga Israeli Israelita dito ay yung kanyang captain. 
Sino ulit yung kanyang captain? Si Cesar, ah. Okay, tandaan natin yan kasi mag, he will play a key role in the in our narrative. So, si Captain Cesar ah, is kinatatakutan ng mga Israelita dahil siya ay may 900 chariots. 900 chariots. Ilan tayo dito sa congregation? Hindi pa yata tayo, isasama natin yung mga live viewers. Kanina, ano, 34, ay 40-something. No, siguro tayo dito, mga around 30 at the same. Hindi pa abot ng 100 yan. Madami na tayo, di ba, kung lahat tayo sasakay sa chariots. It's already an all overwhelming force. How much more? 900 chariots. And this is not chariots of wood or bronze na medyo outdated na sa panahon noon. Ang pinaka-high-tech noong panahon na yon ay yung chariots of iron. So, sasabihin natin, or makikita natin that during this time, Cicera had the upper hand when it comes to technology and kinatatakutan siya ng mga Israelites. 900 chariots of iron. And another description of Cicera was that he took damsels as spoils of war. Makikita natin to sa chapter 5, verse 30, kung mag-ano tayo, it will skip ahead. Ganto ka evil si Sisera na bawat sundalo niya ay dapat may tigdalawa, isa or dalawang babae na kinuho nila mula sa mga kalaban nila. So kinatatakutan ito si Sisera at yung, of course, yung king na nagkukumat sa kanila, si Jabin. To the Israelites, it is a shame that the ungodly people who worship Baal oppress them. They are the people of God. They are the people of Yahweh. They are the example supposedly of holiness, but they are being oppressed by people who served Baal. And they were oppressed for 20 years. The oppression caused Israel to cry out to God. Isn't it ironic na kapag, samba, kapag peace time, kapag nag enjoy sila ng kapayapaan, sumasamba sila dun sa mga ibang Diyos. Pero kapag sila ay na-oppress, saka lang nila maaala, o nga pala, no, mga tao tayo ni Yahweh, ni Jehovah, saka lang nila maaalala yung Diyos. So they cried out to God because the Canaanite gods that they chose to worship did not hear them. Wala naman nag exist kasi na Canaanite gods talaga. So, of course, God is faithful and God is gracious and merciful to His children. He provided a means of deliverance. And this is where our narrative would revolve. Let's continue. Israel's means of deliverance from God, we can see this starting in verse 4. Judges chapter 4, verse 4. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So we can consider Deborah as a motherly judge. In the previous lessons that we have had, we have had male judges, di ba? Kasi parang in Israel, it is a male-dominated figure. Kung maga mas tinitingala nila yung uh, mga males when it comes to leadership. But during this time, we might be surprised that their judge is none other than a female who considered herself as a mother to the Israelites. So kung makikita natin sa verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 7, dun sa Song of Deborah, the inhabitants of the villages ceased, they ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. A mother in Israel. So, wala silang parang tinitingala na parang fatherhead at that time. Instead, sila ay nakakuha ng comfort from God through Deborah, who at that time na parang tinitingala nila bilang ina. She was a mother to the Israelites. So, madaming implications to, no? But, uh, theologian Warren Wiersbe comments that God at this time was treating the Israelites like little children. God was treating the Israelites like little children. Dahil sa sobrang pasaway nila, binibigyan sila ng mga judges, males, who are good at war, to lead them. Pero, kapag namamatay yung mga judges na yun, pinababayaan nila. So, Deborah was like a mother to the Israelites. Also, in the verses that we have read, in verses 4 to 5, we can see that Deborah was also a prophetess. Okay? So, kung babalikan natin yung lesson natin last week, sabi sa Judges chapter 2, verse 18, gaganon lang kayo ng ilang page, And when the Lord raised them up, Judges, then the Lord was with the judge. 
Okay, so we are not surprised that Deborah maintained a close relationship with God. The reason why a lot of people uh, consulted her for counsel and for judgment was because she was knowledgeable with what the will of God is. Siguro kung ikukumpara natin yung mga tao or yung mga elders ng panahon na yon, kahit isama pa natin yung mga lalaki na head ng households, ng tribes nila, mas maalam si Deborah. Mas kinukonsulta si Deborah. It is possible that among all the people, Deborah was the most knowledgeable about God's laws. The question here is, where are the men at this time? Where are the heads of the tribes and the, the families? Nakahanap sila ng comfort kay Deborah. So, there are many implications about that, but we'll just leave it there. Okay, so Deborah was the judge at this time. Now, let's continue our story. Aside from Deborah, God will also use another person. And she, this is Deborah, and she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kedesh, Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Cesera, the captain of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. I will deliver him into thine hand. So, si Deborah, pinatawag niya yung isang lalaki sa mga Israelites whose name was Barak. Whose name was Barak. And inassure niya kay Barak na ito ang sinabi ng Diyos. Hath not God said... So, what Deborah basically uh, assured Barak of was that victory is sure because it is a promise that was given directly by God. Hath not God said, Diyos mismo ang sabi na itong kinatatakutan nyo na si Sarah ay matatalo sa iyong mga kamay. I will deliver him into thine hand. Di ba comfort yun nung panahon na yun na for many years sinaalipos na sila and then the promise would come na mananalo na sila laban dito sa kalaban na kinakatakutan nila. However, we can see here the character of Barak that he is somehow hesitant. The promise of victory was not enough for Barak to follow. Let's continue reading. Verse 8. And Barak said, ito yung reply ni Barak. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. So, the commandment of God is clear. This is what you're supposed, you're supposed to do. The promise of God is clear. The promise of sure victory. Sabi ni Deborah ito kay Barak. Anong sabi ni Barak? Hindi ako pupunta kung hindi ka sasama. Pero kung sasama ka, sige, susundan ko ang Diyos. Let his words sink in to our minds. He is willing not to follow God unless someone goes along with him. So clear na yung pag-uutos ng Diyos, pero gusto niya may kasama pa siya. And he was willing not to follow God kung yung isang tao na gusto niyang kasama ay hindi siya sasamahan. Are we also like that when it comes to the commandments of God? And there is a reason, some commentaries say that there is a reason why uh, Barak uh, wanted Deborah to be by her side. Although mali na talaga, it is wrong for Barak to uh, say that na hindi niya gagawin yung utos ng Diyos. Pero may rason kung bakit gusto niya na si Deborah ay sumama sa kanya. Let us remember that in verses 4 to 5, we can see that Deborah was a prophetess. And we can see that Deborah was blessed by God at that time. So kung gusto niya na kung susunod siya sa Panginoon, mayroong isang tao na malapit sa Panginoon na sasama sa kanya. And it is a good thing na hindi tumanggi si Deborah. Okay? Sabi niya, sige, sasamahan kita. Pero, pero... The honor will not be yours, even though ikaw yung commander. Because God will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. In verse 7. Some say na ito yung parusa ni Barak dahil hindi niya, hindi siya, hesitant siya. He was not willing to follow the direct orders of God immediately. And that is why 
sa babae, isang babae, ibibigay ang glory or yung honor sa pagkapanalo. Okay? But we can be assured, no matter what we see here, that the battle is the Lord's. Ang Diyos ang nagditikta kung paano makakamit ng mga Israelita ang kanilang pagkapanalo. Palagi yan, magre-recur yan throughout the judges and throughout the history of the Israelites. God will dictate the terms of victory. And it often takes great faith for the people to apply before they achieve and enjoy the victory that comes from God. It is required that the people, before they enjoy the victory, that they place their faith on their God who is worthy of their faith. Ito yung gusto ng Diyos para sa mga Israelita, na walang ibang pagsasaligan ang mga Israelita kung di siya lamang. Ang gusto ng Diyos ay hindi sasalig ang mga Israelita sa kanilang mga kakayahan, sa kanilang kalakasan, kung di sa kanya lamang. And maaalala natin yung numerous stories throughout the, the Israelite history kung saan napaka-weird ng circumstances kung saan nanalo pa rin ang mga Israelites. Take for example, the walls of Jericho. Paano nanalo yung Israelites sa makapangyarihan na city ng Jericho? Iba? Wala, wala naman silang siege weapons. Kalaban nila isang malaking city na may mga mala, makakapal na pader. Panalo pa rin sila. Bakit? Kasama nila ang Diyos. And the same principle applies here. God has given a promise and God has given a command and He wanted His people to have faith in Him. Let us remember these two people, si Deborah at saka si Barak. For this morning, we're going to take a pause on our narrative and reflect on what verses we have read. The biblical truth that we would like to highlight here is that God works out His will through various means. God works out His will through various means. Ang Diyos ang nagpapatupad ng kanyang kagustuhan sa iba't ibang paraan. Maaring hindi natin naiintindihan kung ang bakit ganito ang nangyayari? Bakit sa ganitong paraan ipinapatupad ng Diyos? Ang kinakailangan lang po natin gawin ay magtiwala sa Kanya. And kapag tayo ay nagtiwala sa Kanya, hindi tayo mahihirapan na magsilbi sa Kanya at sumunod sa Kanyang pag-uutos. Because God works out His will through various means and sometimes strange means, we must be willing to serve Him. We must be willing to serve Him. Let us reflect on the fallen condition of the characters. Yung mga binanggit natin na characters. Okay? Sa anong paraan tayo nakaka-relate sa kanila when it comes to our fallenness? Let's look at the Israelites. Why is the reason, what is the reason why they are being oppressed? It is because they turned away from God. They served false gods. And they only remembered God, their true God, their redeeming God, only while under persecution. Inalala lang nila yung Diyos tuwing kailangan nila. Kumbaga sa Tagalog, sasabihin natin, tinatawag mo lang ako kung may kailangan ako eh. Naalala mo lang ako kung may kailangan ako eh. Nasabi na ba sa inyo yan? Or sinabi nyo na ba yan sa ibang tao? So somehow we can relate to what is, being, uh, what is happening here. The, on, the Israelites only call out to God just so that their, their pains could be appeased. But they are not really willing to turn to God, to worship the true God. Dahil only after a few years, babalik na naman sila sa kanilang ungodliness. Babalik na naman sila sa kanilang idolatry. And there are many people uh, today who are like that. Nasasabihin nila, okay, Christian ako, I will follow Jesus Christ. But their professions are not genuine. And makikita mo ito sa buhay nila na wala na silang pakialam sa Diyos, na kanilang uh, sinampalatayaan bilang tagapagligtas nila. Kung niligtas ka ng Diyos, anong mangyayari sa iyo? So pagsisilbihan mo na siya. Clearly, this was not the effect to the majority of the Israelites at that time dahil pagkatapos na maka-enjoy sila as a nation ng victory, ay babalik na naman sila sa dati nilang mga Diyos-Diyosan. Let's look at another person that we would like to reflect on it. Barak. Yes, God will use him as a deliverer. And in the book of Hebrews, he would be praised as one of those people with great faith in God. But Barak was not perfect. Merong isang pagkakamali na ginawa si Barak. He was hesitant to follow God's command. When it comes to God's command, medyo nagdadalawang isip pa siya at gusto pa niya na may kasama. And nakakatakot yung sinabi niya, kung di ka sasama sa akin, hindi ko susundin yung Diyos. That statement is, is enough to show that somehow 
paiba-ibang uh, week na faith ni, ni Barak. But the good thing is probably at some point he repented of that kind of weak faith and he was praised in Hebrews as one of those people with great faith. Many times we are also like Barak. The commandments of God are clear in Scripture. Tagalogin mo man or Inglesin or i uh, bisayain or hiligay nun or what language. Klaro ang upag-uutas ng Panginoon and sometimes we make excuses. Sometimes gusto pa natin ng kasama sa ministry bago tayo sumunod sa Diyos. Sometimes kailangan pa natin ng taga-usig sa atin. Sometimes kailangan pa natin na pipilit sa atin bago tayo sumunod sa Diyos. So for Barak, that was his sin that we can also relate. Even though the command was clear, Barak's faith in God still needed to be strengthened at this time. But again, we go back to the biblical truth that we would like to emphasize. God works out His will through various means and we must be willing to serve Him. So for this morning, let us apply this in our lives, in our context today. The first application is that we must be willing to take God seriously. We must be willing to take God seriously. We must take God for who He is. Sino ba ang Diyos para sa inyo? Isang imagination lang? Isang relihiyon? Na optional lang kung kailan nyo lang gustong pagsilbihan, eh, sa kanyo lang pagsisilbihan. No, as believers, God is our life. Worshiping God is our lifestyle. Dahil siya ang nagligtas sa atin at ang purpose natin bilang mga mananampalataya sa mundong ito is sundan yung kanyang pattern of holiness. Hindi tayo ma- magiging perpekto sa mundong ito pero yun ang pag-uutos ng Panginoon. Be ye holy for I am holy. And we must take God seriously and see Him for who He is in order to be able to be effective worshipers in our life today. As believers, God alone is worthy of worship. May mga iba tayong bagay na pinagkakabalahan sa mundong ito. We want to build our families, we want to build our careers, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, there would be something wrong with that if you put those things above God when it comes to your priorities. All the things that we must be doing in our lives is for the glory of God. And all the things that we must be doing should not contradict the direct commandments of God. As believers, we must understand that God alone is worthy of our worship. What about for unbelievers? The same thing applies. You must understand that God alone is worthy of your worship. At some point in our life, we have considered, uh, we have realized that through the gospel, We are sinners who have sinned against God. And it is important for every person to obey the command to repent and believe the gospel. To repent and believe the good news. To repent and turn to God. To acknowledge one's self as a sinner who have sinned and transgressed a holy God. Lahat po tayo, kung tayo ay mga mananampalataya, at some point in our life, we acknowledge that we were sinners. Tama po ba? And that is by the grace of God. That is because of the gospel that has been given to us. And what did we do? We called out to God as what the Bible says. So if you are not sure of your salvation, you have to consider that you cannot save yourself. Only God can provide your salvation. Only God can provide redemption. And He has provided spiritual redemption through none other than Jesus Christ who died on the cross. This was the Messiah that was promised to the Israelites. This is what they're supposed to believe, that God was their Redeemer. The problem with the Israelites at that time was that they are only looking to God as their temporary uh, deliverer, This their deliverer from their political enemies. Once that happens, ano na nangyari? They show their hearts of stone. If you have not yet professed your faith in Jesus Christ, profess faith in Him. Acknowledge that you have sinned against Him, that these sins that you have been committing is transgression against Him. And you must turn from these sins and turn to God. Acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the only Savior who died and paid for your sin. The reason why Jesus Christ died on the cross is so that He could redeem us as sinners. And this is the overall theme that we can see in the book of Judges. Ang kaligtasan ay magmumula sa walang iba kundi ang Diyos. Take God seriously, especially if you are a believer. 
The next application that we can uh, do here is that we must make ourselves available for His service. Let us make available ourselves available for His service. This is connected to the first application. Kinakailangan natin ipresenta ang ating mga sarili bilang available para sa kanyang serbisyo. Dahil uli, sino nga ba ang master at hari natin bilang mga Kristiyano? Ang mga sarili natin? Are we living in this world? Are we doing all of these things? Nagpapagod tayo sa trabaho. Di ba kumakayod tayo? But are we doing all of these things just for ourselves? Just so we can have a good short life? As believers, we have to understand that our lives have to be committed in service to God. And that is why we can see here, Barak hesitating. Nag-hesitate pa siya. Ayoko nung sumunod muna sa Diyos. Unless, Deborah, samahan mo ko. Minsan, nagiging ganun ang attitude natin. Tinitignan muna natin kung may mga kapwa mananampalataya na susunod sa Diyos. Saka lang tayo susunod. And there are many ministries Even despite this pandemic, there are still many safe ministries that we can do. We just have to open our eyes. Ito yung goal natin. Kung magtataka kayo, ano, sa, saan pa ako pwede mag-serve bilang isang member ng Baptist Bible Church? Remember that our primary mission is to share the gospel to other people. Preach the gospel, both to believers and unbelievers. Dahil ang gospel ang comfort sa ating mga mananampalataya. At ang gospel ang good news para doon sa mga tao na hindi pa sumasampalataya kay Jesus. So lahat ng gagawin mo ay dapat nakakonekta dyan. consider mo na ang service na yan is service for God. A lot of people go to church para sila yung pagservisan. Hindi para sila yung magserve. Kaya po worship service, ang tawag natin sa ating worship service, e tayo yung nagsuserve sa Diyos. How do we serve? In the church context, we serve by being an encouragement to fellow believers. We serve by supporting the preaching of His Word. We serve by singing out the truths that we believe in Scripture, causing everyone present to be encouraged and to get encouragement from those truths that we proclaim. Ginagawa ba natin yun, especially during the pandemic na nagkahiwahiwalay tayo? Believers, we do not have excuse. We do not have any excuses not to serve God in this pandemic. There are many ways for us to proclaim the gospel and to be an encouragement to fellow members. Nahihiya ako. Okay lang yan. Hanapin mo yung pinaka-close mo. Kamustahin mo. Share ka ng verse sa kanila. Simple lang, di ba? But you are doing what God commands you. In Scripture, in New Testament, sunod-sunod yan. One of those is to exhort one another. So there are numerous commands in Scripture that we must quickly obey. Sabi ni Deborah kay Barak, ito ang sinabi ng Diyos, victory is sure. I will deliver your enemy into your hands. Ano sabi ni Barak? I will not follow kung hindi ka susunod sa akin, kung hindi ka sasama sa akin. Again, makikita natin yung sarili natin kay Barak. We must not be waiting for signs or even people before we obey the clear commandments of God. Our church needs members who are willing to be serious with their biblical responsibilities to the church. As a member of the local church, of Baptist Bible Church, you have the responsibility to edify the body of Christ. Dahil kapag pinagsisilbihan mo ang iyong mga members, pinagsisilbihan mo ang kanyang mga anak, Are you familiar with our church covenant? Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the, and the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant or agreement with one another as one body of Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love. Do you love your fellow members? To strive for the advancement of this church. Can we say that a church is advancing kapag kulang-kulang palagi ang attendance, 10%, 20%, even sa live, kulang. 
to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness. That's why I commend all of you who have attended Sunday school. This is part of your knowledge because we put emphasis on knowledge on special doctrines that are somewhat set aside by believers in their everyday lives. For the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections. Do you care about Baptist Bible Church? To give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin. To sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine. To contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us. Kumusta ang ating faith promise? The relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. That's just part of our responsibilities as members of Baptist Bible Church. Again, there are numerous commands in Scripture that we simply have to obey. Hindi na natin kinakailangan na maghintay pa ng ibang tao na sasama sa atin. Kinakanta natin, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Yung pala sa hindsight natin, kailangan mo na may kasama ako. We must understand that availability for service goes along with sacrifice and preparation. Kinakailangan merong sakripisyo kapag ikaw ay magseserbisyo. Merong pagod. Kasama yan sa ministry. There are, ma there are many people, Christians, who will only serve God if it is convenient for them. Basta convenient sa kanila, hindi sila nahirapan, hindi sila pinapawisan, hindi sila nasistress, that's their service. But you cannot really make yourself available without sacrificing your time, your effort, your energy. Kasama yan sa ministry. Hindi pwedeng magsuserve ka sa Diyos at ang kanyang simbahan na hindi ka napapagod. Tama po ba? Hindi pwedeng pupunta ka sa church na kung kailan lang convenient sa'yo. Kung kail hindi pwedeng mag-witness ka lang kung kailan convenient sa'yo. Hindi lang pwedeng mag... Wala kang sacrifice. Preparation is also included when it comes to availability. If we want to present ourselves as available for the service of God, we have to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice. We have to prepare for our service. And that is why we have these gatherings. We study the Word of God. Sa tuwing may mga tao na nagtuturo ng ibang doktrina, ano mangyayari? Handa tayong sagutin sila dahil nag-aral tayo. Hindi magtatago tayo. Kapag may kumay-question ng faith natin, handa tayong sagutin sila because we studied the Word of God. Hindi yung antagal-tagal mo sa ministry, hindi ka naman nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. At kaya nabulungan ko lang ng mga maling doktrina, nasa ibang kulto ka na. Nasa ibang simbahan ka na. And that is why it is important for us believers to encourage one another. Palakasin natin ang isa't isa sa doktrina, sa mga katotohanan na sinasabi ng Biblia. Dahil wala tayong comfort na pagkukunan, kundi tayo-tayo din. Gumunaw man ang mundo, ano mangyayari? Tayo pa rin ang Baptist Bible Church. We have to work together, but we must not wait for each other to move before we obey the commandments of God. And that is why I commend everyone who has been here with our Sunday school. Natututo po ba kayo sa ating mga Sunday school? Okay, so eventually po, magkakahiwalay na tayo sa mga dating age groups natin. And by that time, Sana naman po, yung mga natututunan natin sa Sunday School ay may apply din natin at kaya nating ituro sa ibang tao. Lalong-lalo na kung tayo ay may mga anak or may mga bata sa ating pamilya, pwede nating ipasa yung mga natututunan natin. Dahil kapag nagtanong yung mga yan, dapat handa po tayo. Tama po ba? Okay, let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the truths that you have learned from your word. We thank you, Lord, for these people who have joined us and uh, sacrificed their time and their effort to be with us early this morning. We pray, Lord, for those who are not yet here, Lord, who are still to come. We ask, Lord, that you guide them safely in their travels. We ask, Lord, uh, for this church, Lord, to be eager to learn from your word. 
and also to be eager to serve you in, his, in the ministries of the church, to be able, eager to help one another, to be e eager to exhort one another with the word of God. Lord, we are not a perfect church. We are not perfect members. However, we ask, Lord, that you give us the desire to encourage one another and to serve you as what your will is for your church. All these things I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, maaari na po kayong maupo at tayo ay magkakaroon ng service sa uh, 10 o'clock.